ABC Columbia News. Live from Maine and Gervais, this is Good Morning Columbia. Good morning, Columbia. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday morning. I'm Christy Vaughn. And I'm Rochelle Dean. We are live from Maine and Gervais. Your time right now is 5 a.m. And if you're just waking up here with us, first of all, thank you. Mm -hmm. And secondly, we're going to get right to your weather. And there is a bit of fog outside and a few bits of drizzle as we start yeah, in the morning. it's kind of misty out there. I was like trying to yeah. rush to hurry up and get inside. And it's that nagging mist, you know, really whether is. you put up an umbrella or yeah. not. It's kind of just mm -hmm. moving slightly towards you because there's a little bit of a breeze in the air. But for more on what you can expect, hopefully no rain, let's turn things over to meteorologist Jonathan Kennedy. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I, I Kind of a foggy start, another yeah. mild start today, cloudy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not really seeing much of a chance of rain today, which is good news there. Yeah, well, we're finally good. trying to get rid of that, but uh, we'll hang on to the cloud cover for most of the area today. Let's take a look at the current conditions as you head out on this Thursday morning. Most of you are probably just waking up on this Thursday morning. Low to mid 60s, essentially carbon copy of what we've seen the last couple of days. Warmest spots right here in Columbia, 65. Orangeburg also at 65. 61 for Winsboro, Newberry, and Saluda, all at 61. So not really anybody cooling off that much. Nobody really all that much warmer than, than anybody else. So uh, temperatures obviously way above normal for this time of year. About 20 degrees above normal from where our current or normal lows rather are typically uh, falling for the first week of November. Now satellite and radar very quiet for us in the way of rainfall, but we are seeing some fog. We are seeing some light mist. Meteorologically, they're the same thing. It all depends on the visibility. Uh, fog, mist, it's all cloud droplets. It's just a matter of how dense those droplets are. 24-hour rainfall, not particularly impressive for us local, but notice Manning at 2.2 inches. Orangeburg around a third of an inch. Uh, but for us here, barely anything at all, and that'll likely be the case uh, through much of the day today, expecting drier air to come our way. But we are still going to hang on to the cloud cover for you. So we're hoping to maybe see a little sunshine today. We're holding out some hope that we might see some, but I really don't see much of it in the forecast for us, and uh, certainly not anytime soon with the cloud cover kind of locked in. Visibility only around two miles downtown, Bishopville at a mile and a half, Manning at two and a half, a lot of spots around two miles, and this will likely be more diminished as we move throughout the morning as some areas cool off just a little bit. Now, as I've mentioned several times this week because the fog's been in and out pretty much every day. A few degrees in the air temperature makes a huge difference because the dew point temperatures, if we fall closer to that, we get that saturation. That's when you get the condensation, and uh, that's when the cloud droplets form there for you. So looking at cloud cover, you notice the cloud cover all over the place. That white, that is clouds, and uh, you'll see a few breaks here and there, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty much locked in for us. So mostly cloudy skies today, but you notice not really seeing any rain. We'll see some rain towards the upstate, uh, some geographic enhancement of that rain there, and notice the system coming out of the Central Plains. That brings us some rain as we head into the upcoming weekend. Now, it will be cloudy, but it will be warmer today. Expecting highs to be in the mid to upper 70s by this afternoon. Even with the clouds, we'll be around 80 tomorrow and 80 around Saturday. Then that cold front comes in. Notice how much we cool down. We'll go from 80 on Saturday to a high of just 60 on Sunday, maybe only in the upper 50s on Monday. So uh, certainly looks like some up and down weather and still going on for us. Yeah. We've been kind of pretty much the same thing at all hours of the day the last couple of days. <laughs> That's right. Now we're going to start working some of those highs and lows as we move into the weekend. Yeah, and then it'll be time to pull out the Coats. coats exactly yes. well anything other than this gloomy weather i mean i can deal with the cold we yeah just we probably won't have a sun. good chance of seeing some sunshine probably at least probably till tuesday of next Ooh, week goodness yeah so. that's not good right. news okay yeah. well thanks jonathan mm -hmm. thank you well, right now we do want to give you a quick traffic update as you get ready to head out the door this morning. That's right, Ann. There is good news at the top of the hour. There are no incidents to report on the roads in or around the capital city, but we'll keep our eyes on the roads and give you information as anything changes as you ready, get ready to head out for your morning commute. And ABC Columbia wants to help you jumpstart your day. We've got a rundown of your top Thursday morning headlines. We're going to get started by hearing from the candidates for a runoff in the city of Columbia. The Columbia City Council at large seat still up for grabs after vote 2015 ended in a runoff. Howard Duvall and Andy Smith left standing vying for that position formerly held by Cameron Runyon. The winner will be decided in a runoff election set for November 17th. This is Howard Duvall's sixth political campaign. He says his long-term experience in municipal government and finance is what sets him apart from the competition. We need somebody with uh, many years of experience to hit the ground running and help get the city straight. Duvall lists balancing the city's finances, fixing the city infrastructure, and refocusing on neighborhoods as his top three short-term goals. 
No political experience is stopping his competition, though, that's Andy Smith. A, that's right. He says his role as executive director of the Nickelodeon Theater and endorsement by Mayor Steve Benjamin have helped to legitimize his political newcomer status. I spent the last 10 years of my life really working every day to make Columbia a more exciting, more vibrant place to live. Well, Smith says neighborhood safety is a priority, along with responsible flood recovery and creating a cultural plan. Again, that runoff is scheduled for November 17th, in addition to the at-large seat. Residents will also be voting between Aaron Bishop and Ed McDowell for the District 2 seat. And big changes over in West Columbia. Residents there have elected a new mayor. Bobby Horton beat out incumbent Joe Owens, who was the mayor there previously. Tonight, West Columbia's Election Commission will certify the vote. Horton has served the city of West Columbia for 19 years, seven and a half of those as mayor from 2003 to 2011. Of course, many of us hoping to see the return of the sun very soon because it's causing some problems in parts of the state, all this rain. Yeah, remaining underwater after heavy rains is part of Marion County. Several streets in downtown Mullins in that county are under 10 to 12 inches of water. Residents are being asked to stay inside their homes and schools there under a two hour delay this morning. And as people cope with the problems the recent rainfall has caused, including that historic flooding, others still trying to pick up the pieces. It's not too late, though, for flood victims to apply for temporary food assistance. Thousands lined up yesterday at Word of God Church to apply. This relief could be, you know, the difference between a family having food on the table. You know, we're here to be a safety net for people who need this type of assistance to feed their families. Now, the center will be open again today and tomorrow from 9 until 7. For additional site locations and more information on how to apply for the assistance, be sure to visit our website, abccolumbia.com. Well, a friend of suspected church, Charleston church shooter Dylan Roof, who had been arrested for failing to report Roof's plan, is now out of jail on bond. Joseph Joey Meek posted a $25,000 bond. He must be monitored and live with his grandparents. Now, in September, Meek was indicted on charges of failing to report knowledge of a felony and making false statements. He had told an FBI agent that he didn't know specifics of Roof's plan, but then gave interviews in which he said Roof had talked to him about wanting to hurt African Americans. Roof is accused of shooting and killing nine people inside of Emanuel AME Church in Charleston back in June. And the mother of a missing baby in Horry County is facing charges while officials continue to search for that child. 33-year-old Sarah Tony is charged with unlawful conduct toward a child. She's accused of leaving her daughter Grace in a creek near Socasty, just west of Myrtle Beach. Bad weather is making it harder, though, to find the baby's body. Crews have already had to delay the search efforts due to storms. So a few stories that we'll continue to update on the website and on air. That's right. And still to come, new clues suggest a Russian jetliner that crashed in the Egyptian desert may have been brought down by a bomb. Yeah, we're going to bring you the very latest on the investigation. And right now, 65 degrees with cloudy and foggy conditions. Expect an overcast day with highs in the mid to upper 70s this afternoon. More details next, live from Maine and Gervais. Live from Maine and Gervais, this is Good Morning Columbia with Christy Vaughn, Rochelle Dean, and weather with meteorologist Jonathan Kennedy. Good Morning Columbia. Time is now 512 on your Thursday morning, waking up with cloudy conditions, foggy conditions, and temperatures in the mid-60s. That's essentially what we've seen all week, and we'll likely see more clouds throughout the day, but we are expecting a warmer forecast. Winds are going to be out of the south, and that'll eventually uh, try to work some uh, kind of a different air mass in here, but uh, look for some fogs and mist this morning. Uh, we'll see a high near 78 later today, and then uh, we'll stick with the cloud cover through tonight, low near 63 with cloudy conditions. So we're not necessarily going to see a break from the clouds, but we'll see a break from uh, kind of the same monotonous kind of weather we've seen over the last couple of days. Rochelle. 
All right. Well, it looks like there may be a light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully soon. Thanks, Jonathan. Well, here's a quick look at some of the other stories that are making headlines across the country. Investigators are considering the possibility that a bomb may have been aboard the Russian jetliner that crashed into the Egyptian desert. ABC's Lana Zak has the latest. Counterterrorism officials suggesting an explosive device rather than mechanical failure likely brought down the Russian jetliner in the Sinai Peninsula. It has investigators taking more seriously the claims of an ISIS-affiliated terrorist group that took credit for the death of 224 plane passengers in Egypt. The immediate aftermath of the plane crash seen in this new video. Plumes of smoke still rising from the debris, bodies wheeled out on stretchers. Those bodies, investigators say, are being examined for shrapnel and injuries from an explosion, a possible indication where a bomb might have been hidden. And now the British government taking a controversial action. There will be no UK passenger flights out to Sharm el-Sheikh uh, from now. Passengers who are on the ground in Sharm el-Sheikh will be returned to the UK. The foreign minister calling it catastrophic for Egyptian tourism, 20,000 British citizens already in Sharm el-Sheikh. I would prefer to come here and make my own decision no rather than the government uh, telling us I couldn't go. It is a really bad decision because I think that nowadays this can happen anywhere in the world. You need to live your life and, and not, be, not let the terrorists win. U.S. officials here in Washington are cautioning against premature conclusions. The FAA already had recommendations in place limiting travel in the region. And meanwhile, here in the United States, U.S. airport security has not been affected. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. Well, switching gears now, one tough Gamecock isn't throwing in the towel just yet. Christy, what can you tell us? Rochelle, one Gamecock is getting back on the field after what was thought to be a career-ending injury and a young Carolina quarterback set to play Saturday at Tennessee. Our Tim Hill has your sports minute to win it. He's fresh to Dramatic scene for USC women's soccer at the SEC tournament. Senior Sophie Groff tore her ACL a few games ago. Her career thought to be over, comes in for a penalty kick and misses. Auburn does not. A perfect 5-for-5, five five and the Tigers eliminate USC in the quarterfinals. A heartbreaker for Groff and the Gamecocks. Carolina, though, is expected to move on to the NCAA tournament. Gamecock football news. USC interim coach Sean Elliott announcing after practice last night that walk-on punter Sean Kelly has earned a scholarship. Kelly, one of USC's most consistent players this season. Other Gamecock football news, wide receiver Debo Samuel will not be available this Saturday against Tennessee. He has re-aggravated a hamstring issue. Freshman quarterback Lorenzo Nunez, according to USC offensive coordinator G.A. Mangus, should get more playing time this Saturday. I'm Tim Hill. That's your ABC Columbia Sports Minute to Win It. Hope it helps get your Wednesday off to a good start. That would be great, Tim, if it were Wednesday, but it is Thursday, <laughs> so it's off to a good start, though. Still to come, we are skating into the season. It's some frozen fun making its way into downtown Columbia. And right now we're in the mid-60s with cloudy skies, also some foggy conditions across the area. Expect more clouds today, highs a little warmer in the mid to upper 70s. All details next. Stay with us for a lot from Andrew Gervais.